What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on the brachial plexus and the blood supply to the upper limb. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, let's see where we left off. Okay, so we had this diagram in front of us and we're filling in the branches of the brachial plexus and trying to fill in some blood supply as well. All right, so if I have my lateral cord that's up here, right, it's the most lateral to the axillary artery, which nerve is going to be coming off the lateral cord? What do you guys think? It's going to be my lateral pectoral nerve, okay? Now, it's my lateral pectoral nerve. Which muscles does the lateral pectoral nerve innervate? All right, lateral pectoral nerve coming off the lateral cord. It's only going to innervate the pectoralis major, okay? So lateral for less. Um, if we were talking about my medial pectoral nerve, my medial pectoral nerve, it would innervate both pectoralis minor and pectoralis major, but lateral pectoral nerve coming off the lateral cord, only going to do pectoralis major, okay? All right, so let's look at some more branches. So we also have here, we have, let's label this 10, 11, and 12, okay? So we have three nerves running off of our, which cord is this? It's our medial cord, okay? So we have number 10, number 11, and number 12, okay? So which nerves come off of the medial cord? What do you guys think? We have the medial pectoral nerve. Excuse me. Yes, we have the medial pectoral nerve. We have our medial. I'll just put M for medial, just running out of space. We have our medial brachial cutaneous nerve. Okay, cut for cutaneous. And then we also have our medial ante antebrachial cutaneous nerve, okay? We have our medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve. Now, when you're looking at the prosection, the best way to find my medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve, I actually saw it in one of the prosections, it goes very, very far down from the medial cord, and it goes very, very far down the arm and goes all the way to the forearm. So ante for before, like antes in, in Spanish, Antes for before, it's the forearm, so the forearm comes before the arm, okay? So it's gonna travel all the way down to the forearm. If they tag that, you know for certain that it's gonna be the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve, and you can follow it all the way back up, and it's actually gonna go, and it should attach to my medial cord. That's gonna confirm that it is, in fact, the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve, all right? And then the medial brachial cutaneous nerve, you know it would wanna, it would want to actually head somewhere towards the brachii region, right? So maybe the brachialis or the uh, the biceps brachii. We know it's going to go somewhere in the arm, right? So it's not going to go as far. It's not going to go to the forearm. So that's a clear way to tell that. And the medial pectoral nerve also can be found. My medial pectoral nerve is going to travel from my medial cord, and it's going to go to pectoralis minor and to pectoralis major, okay? So that's how we know to find those three branches coming off of my medial cord, okay? Let's talk about my posterior cord. So my posterior cord has the lower, the middle, and the upper, which nerves? What do you guys think? The lower, the middle, the upper coming off of the posterior cord. I'll go ahead and label them right here. So we have 13, 14, 15, 13, 14, and 15, okay? So these are the subscapular nerves. So we have the lower subscapular nerve, right? We have the lower subscapular nerve. Lower subscapular nerve. All right, and then we have our middle. What's another name for the middle? 
subscapular nerve, also known as thoracodorsal. And then we have our upper subscapular nerve. So we said we have our lower and middle and upper subscapular nerves coming off of my posterior cord, okay? So if we need to define this, let's say, let's say um, we're looking for it in lab, or let's say it was tagged and we want to confirm that it was one of those nerves. Then the best way to do that is to make sure we get our Michigan M out of the way, right? Because we want to get rid of the medial and the, and the lateral cord, okay? We don't care about those. We know it's coming off the posterior cord. So I move those out of the way. Now I can see my axillary artery very clearly, right? So now I'm going to move my axillary artery out of the way because I know it's superficial to my posterior cord, okay? So now that I've kind of moved those out of the way with my probe, I'm looking for my posterior cord. And I know my posterior cord is going to have quite a few different branches. I think the easiest way to find maybe the lower subscapular or the upper subscapular is to start with the thoracodorsal nerve or the middle subscapular, right? Because where does that nerve innervate? Where does it go? What do you guys think? It's going to travel to the latissimus dorsi. So you can actually see this thing. So let's say we have, let's say our latissimus dorsi is over here, right? So you can actually see this thing travel all the way to latissimus dorsi, okay? So let's say we also have our serratus anterior over here, okay? Not to be confused, right? So the thoracodorsal nerve is not to be confused with the long thoracic nerve that travels to my serratus anterior, right? Also, so just keep those in mind because I see that those tend to get mixed up the most, all right? So once I found my thoracal dorsal nerve, I trace it all the way back to my posterior cord, right? So it's coming off my posterior cord. 10, 11, 12, remember, these were the medial cord. So 10, 11, 12, these were all medial. And then 13, 14, 15, those are all the posterior cord, okay? So if I wanted to find my lower subscapular or my upper subscapular nerve, I'm looking for my middle subscapular nerve, tracing it back up to my posterior cord, right? So all the way back up here. And now I've kind of confirmed that I'm in the right place. So now if I need to find the lower and the upper, well, we know that the upper, you know, it's a little more proximal, right? and my lower subscapular nerve is supposed to go a little bit more distal. Now, which muscles do the upper and the lower subscapular nerves innervate? What do you guys think? Okay, well the upper subscapular nerve is only going to innervate the subscapularis muscle, okay? So my upper subscapular nerve only innervates my subscapularis muscle, okay? Now, what, do you, what about the lower subscapular nerve? My lower subscapular nerve is going to innervate the subscapularis and my teres major, okay? So my lower subscapular nerve actually goes a little bit lower, which makes sense, right? If it's lower, it's going to innervate my teres major, okay? Let's talk a little bit about more blood supply. So now what's my blood supply to my latissimus dorsi? What do you guys think? So let's say I have here coming off of let's see uh, coming off of here let's go ahead and just say right so we said this region right here is going to be acting as our axillary artery let's say we had a branch and then this branch did another further branch that kind of headed this way and went a little posterior and then a different branch that heads to my latissimus dorsi. What do you guys think? What is the blood supply to the latissimus dorsi? It's gonna be my thoracal dorsal artery, okay? So I'll put over here, thoracal dorsal artery. All right, the reason I know it's my thoracal dorsal artery is because I see it coming off of my latissimus dorsi. I track it all the way back up and I hit a branch, okay? This is to help confirm what artery this is. I see this branch 
and then I see it go back to the axillary artery, okay? Now, back to this branch. If this is my axillary artery, I know this is all arterial supply. I know it's all blood supply. That means right here, this tends to be thicker, right, when we see it in lab. This is my, which, um, which blood supply do you think is? this is? So we have axillary artery, we have a branch coming off, it splits into my thoracal dorsal artery and something else, okay? Well, if it splits in the thoracal dorsal, I know that it's going to split into circumflex scapular artery. That means this region here, number 17, is going to be my subscapular artery. All right. That's the blood supply there for the latissimus dorsi is my thoracal dorsal artery, traced it back up, saw that it wrapped around the scapula, went posterior, and went to my, uh, my circumflex scapular artery, went to my um, posterior side of the scapula, right? And then I also have my subscapular artery right there, number 17, okay? Now, what's the blood supply to my, to my serratus anterior? Well, I would expect to see, let's say we had, again, if we follow this, if we follow this up, you know, it's getting a little messy, but follow this up. We're still at axillary artery, right? Let's say we're still at axillary artery. Um, we might have, let's say we have a trunk here that splits into four, okay? And then maybe we have something coming off going this way, okay? So I'll label this number 19. I'll label this number 20, okay? What do you guys think the blood supply is to my serratus anterior? Well, if we know the long thoracic nerve is what innervates the serratus anterior, then I know my blood supply to my serratus anterior is my lateral thoracic artery, okay? So lateral thoracic artery. Not to be confused with my long thoracic nerve, which we had um, a number eight, long th thoracic nerve, lateral thoracic artery. Okay. And number 20, what do you guys think that is? It's going to be about in the second region. It's a little bit more proximal. It's one of the first things we kind of hit coming off the axillary artery coming, going from proximal to distal. This is my thoracal acromial trunk. And we know there's four branches. We have CADP, cadavers are dead people. Um, so we have the four branches will be the pectoral branch. We have a clavicular branch, an acromial branch, and a deltoid branch. Most of the sections I see, we see a pectoral branch uh, coming off of my trunk. The trunk looks a little bit thicker coming off the axillary artery. And we can see that blood supply going to my pectoralis minor and my pectoralis major. Okay, so that's my thoracal acromial trunk. We expect my lateral thoracic artery to be somewhere near there. However, in a lot of prosections, we do in fact see quite a bit of variation and we may in fact see blood supply coming off the thoracal dorsal artery going to my serratus anterior. Not to, not to be confused, right? So those aren't gonna be thoracal dorsal arteries. They're also gonna be lateral thoracic arteries, right? So I can label these 19. These are also going to be lateral thoracic arteries because they're going to the serratus anterior, okay? So, and I know they're coming off an artery, so they got to be the lateral thoracic artery, all right? So there's a little bit of variation there, but uh, expect to see that in the lab, okay? If we see the axillary nerve diving deep into the axilla, we know which blood supply runs parallel with it. It's going to be the posterior humeral circumflex artery, okay? Posterior humeral circumflex artery is a little bit thicker than my anterior humeral circumflex artery, and uh, we know that's going to be a little bit superior to that, okay? So also coming off of my axillary artery in that first region, right? Also expect to see my superior, which, 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 uh, which blood supply do we expect to see coming off of region one of the axillary artery? What do you guys think? So right about here, I'll label this guy number 21. 
Okay, number 21. What do you guys think? It's the first region that usually comes before the trunk. We have our superior. That goes into the first and the second intercostals of the thoracic cavity, right? Of kind of the rib cage. It's going to go into those intercostal muscles in between the ribs, okay? That's my superior thoracic artery. So we expect to see it pretty proximal and kind of kind of coming off this way, going into those first two intercostal spaces of my ribs. So, you know, coming off my brachial artery, I know, um, so if this is my brachial artery, I know running pretty parallel to my, to my, um, my radial nerve, I'd expect to see this thicker branch right here. Maybe there's another one here, a little bit of variation, but it's going to be coming off my brachial artery and it's going pretty close to my radial nerve. It's going to be my deep brachial artery. Okay. So this is 22 deep brachial artery. Okay. Um, sure there's a few other key details I don't want to miss but um, for the purposes of this video I think that's everything we're gonna cover so just make sure you think of all these things and my biggest tip is if you see something you think is a nerve or an artery before you jump to that conclusion because you've seen it so many times you want to trace it back and make sure it is what it is. So if you trace it back and it hits the axillary artery, you know it is an artery. So wherever it's feeding into, that's going to be the name of that branch coming off the artery. If you think something's a nerve, trace it back and hopefully hit the brachial plexus and maybe you hit a medial, posterior, or a lateral cord and that's going to help you determine, okay, I hit my medial cord. I know it's got to be one of these three medial branches coming off the medial cord. Yes, in fact, it is the medial brachial cutaneous nerve because it's going into the brachii, right? It's coming off my medial cord. So you want to use those kind of that kind of thought process when you're trying to identify these things in the lab, okay? So that's everything for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.